so I just finished another game of uh, playing with Rana and uh, I was just uh, thinking of uh, making a short guide of uh, how I like to play this faction uh, and I think that this goes mostly for medium and large size maps I have played too few uh, small maps to uh, have an idea of how to play this faction really so that will have to be another video but if we start with the wielders we have Sheikam we start with the raider skill and plus damage to hunters and storm guard as a specialization uh, I would say this is one of the worst wielders to pick uh, since I don't use uh, Hunters of Storm Guards uh, much when I play this faction uh, except for maybe in the beginning when you just uh, start to build up your army you might have some of these uh, I also don't like the Raider skill at all so he is one of the least uh, favorite uh, wielders Ichamo He's got the destruction skill and uh, plus one to destruction essence. Uh, this is quite good, I would say, uh, since you need a lot of destruction magic, uh, primarily to use uh, sabotage to decrease the defense and uh, spell resistance of the the opponents. So he's a quite good choice I would say. Mishugna has the creation magic and 40% spell damage power. I think he's not a so good choice. Creation magic is really good to have of course. But I almost never use the spell damage power. I uh, never use those kind of spells. Primarily because uh, most often the AI has really high spell damage resistance, so the damage taking spells doesn't cause any damage whatsoever. So I almost never go for that. So I'm sure it's not a very good choice in my opinion. Chao, on the other hand, is a really nice choice, I would say. He's got the positioning skill and the 40% spell damage resistance. Uh, so positioning gives you, I think, 30% to ranged resistance and also one plus troop movement uh, at the level 3 level. So both of those are really, really good to have as uh, when you play Rana, both the ranged resistance and the extra troop movement that you can get. Also 40% spell damage resistance is really good to have to protect yourself uh, from them casting spells on you. So Pacha is a top choice I would say. So Arlak is another good choice. Uh, it's got the combat training and 20 Malay and ranged offense to range Rana troops. So it will not be applied to the beast troops of your army. So, but otherwise, it's a quite good choice, I would say. Uh, not uh, the top choice, though. Uh, Rask, uh, another quite good choice with the melee skill and one to troop movement for Ravagers and Riders of the Swamp. I like to use these uh, Riders of the Swamp quite a lot, so giving them one to troop movement is quite good, I would say. Still not the top choice for me, uh, but quite good. Uh, Rick Tap is another really good choice with uh, the guard skills giving you melee resistance, I think it's 30% and this is really really good to have also with a 20% range resistance it 
it's also one thing that you really want to have when you play Rana. So he is a top choice as well. Slacken, one of the worst choices I would say, with a learning skill and one plus range to range troops. As I don't rely very much on the ranged uh, units, I think this is not a good choice at all. Chira, another good choice I would say with the Arcana magic and Arcana essence. Arcana is the, probably the best magic for uh, when you play Rana, since you can use the Dimension Door, for example, and also it's part of the Edril Scales, which is also very important for Rana, I would say. So he's also a very good choice to start with. If you look into the units... Uh, Hunters and Storm Guards is nothing I rely on in the late game because they are too weak. They have too little health to make uh, good defense. The, on the other hand they have a Stealthy which is uh, quite nice to have. But still this is not something I use in the late game, only in the early game when you can get this for free sometimes and uh, maybe you don't have the possibility to make any other recruitments. This could be good. Sh uh, shamans and sages are quite nice since it's mostly the only ranged units that I use. And uh, as a level 1 unit, then uh, they, I go for the, those instead of the Hunters, mostly. So, uh, these are quite weak though, so in the late game I don't use these on my main wielders very much. Uh, I'll come to that, I guess. But... Uh, these are really good to defend your town, I would say, since uh, ranged uh, units it's much more preferred than, uh, I would say. So then they will be really good to have. So I normally have at least two, uh, two buildings to recruit these guys. Uh, guards, they are quite... Uh, tanky, good defenders for the shamans, I would say. Uh, they are not super good otherwise, since they are so slow. On the other hand, they have the rush ability that uh, can't be used that uh, successful, I would say. So this is uh, something that can be good to uh, have in the beginning and maybe to defend your town, but I rarely use it on my main wielders in the late game. Uh, Ravagers, really nice unit, uh, especially Riders of the Swamp that gives you one creation asset, uh, essence and two destruction. They are quite fast, they have five movements. And you have the Postpone Your Turn ability as well. As well as the uh, uh, melee offense uh, when you for each step you take. So that's quite ni nice also. So this is something that I really use on my main wielders. Especially in the late game. Uh, to try to take down the opponents as fast as possible. Uh, so these are really good then, due to their high movement. Crawlers and burrowers. 
Yeah, this is a unit that I often have been thinking of using. But in the end I <laughs> almost never use them. Uh, they have the burrow ability, so they can be really good for showing up uh, next to the opponent's uh, ranged units. The only problem with that is that it takes one round before they will show up. So for the first round they won't be able to block their ranged units. Uh, I would say this is making them much more much worse, I would say, because it's really in the first round that you need to block the opponent's ranged units. So for that reason I'm not really using these guys at all. Of course in the early game they can be used when you don't have any other troops. Tremors not something that I use either, actually. Uh, I don't really see the use case. Okay, they give quite a lot of essence, so for that case they're good and they can be used to negate opponent's initiative and defense, so it's not so bad. Uh, still, you can do too few of these and uh, there are better options. I would say, than using these guys. And that option would be to use the Shelums. Who's got the ranged resistance, which is really nice to have. Uh, they give you two to creation, a one to arcana, which is really good. And also they give you the option to generate the unit's essence. So for one turn you can get four creation and two uh, arcana instead. Uh, these are really tanky, they have 80 health. Uh, the only downside is that they have only two movement and eight initiative. So in the middle game uh, it can be quite hard to use these uh, on your main hero or main wielder since uh, the other units that I mostly use, the dragons and riders of the swamp, are really fast ones. These will be left behind and sometimes doesn't even have the chance to attack before the game is over. So then the only use case is to generate essence for them. Which could be good I guess in certain cases, but uh, they are more they are better to use in the late game, I would say, when you have uh, more troop movements for all your units. Maybe you have picked up some artifacts that give you troop movement. And maybe you have some skills that will really give you troop movement. And you can also do some research to improve this. So maybe then these could have 8 to movement or so. And then these will be able to attack also which makes them much more useful. So then I can use a couple of stacks of these on the main wielder. And so we come to the Thedras, Dragons and Elder Dragons. Uh, I, normal, I almost never use the Thedras. Because they are not that good, they have quite uh, short range, I would say. So I normally don't recruit these just to use these, I guess. Uh, I guess they could be used to defend your town, though, uh, since they are ranged units. It's quite good. But I like to upgrade them to dragons to begin with. They are really strong. They have 160 health, really high damage, and all the other stats are good as well. And these guys can uh, attack uh, actually up to three enemies within a time, uh, because they can attack uh, with a range of uh, two hexes. 
so these are really good. Uh, I guess the downside is that they cost a lot of ancient amber. And uh, you can all only have three of them uh, before you have extended the troop size. And uh, they give you some arcana and destruction essence as well, which is good. And then we come to the Elder Dragons, which is the best unit in the game, I would say. And this gives you one more destruction than the dragons. And they also have better stats overall. And these are really good. Of course, they cost 4 Ancient Amber, so that's real expensive, uh, so it can be hard to get that amount of uh, Ancient Amber in the game, depending on the map you play, so it might take some time to make it worth to upgrade these guys. But of course, these are really good to have, and uh, these are one of the main units I have on my uh, wielder, my main wielder in the middle and late game. Uh, together with the Riders of the Swamp and the Shellen Elders. Uh, so they are really, really nice. Uh, if you go to skills, uh, we have a lot of different skills, so as an eye for Amber. Uh, I could actually even go for this one on the main wielder if I'm really short of Ancient Amber. Maybe I haven't found any resources to get this. I could get this on my main wielder actually. So, since uh, uh, this one is really crucial to be able to build dragons and also to do a lot of research. Uh, so, this is a must to have when you play Rana. Arcana magic is of course a really good skill to have. I guess I will come to the magics later. Uh, but uh, this is the most uh, crucial uh, magic skill to have for Rana, I would say. Uh, archery is not something I would like to have on my heroes or wielders mainly, uh, since I don't use uh, ranged units on the wielders much, maybe for defending, but on the other hand uh, mostly you don't have to defend your town that often it's much more important to have it on your main wielders I would say. Channeling is not something I want to have normally either, simply because I don't use spell damage power. Uh, Chaos magic it's not something you normally get uh, when you play Rana. If you get the chance to pick it, it could be good because there are certain spells that are good to use. So it's a quite good choice. Uh, combat training is really really good to have. It gives you the extra damage and also plus retaliation. So a very good skill. Command of course is uh, essential to have to get uh, to level 9 as soon as possible I would say. Craft spiders, nothing you want to have since you can research to get more glimmer weave. Uh, so this is not something you would like to have normally. Creation magic, and, uh, another really important magic to have. I'll come to that later in the spells uh, tutorial. Uh, Canning could also be quite good to increase your offense and defense during the first three rounds. 
normally a battle that doesn't take more than three rounds, so it uh, it's quite good to have this one, I would say. Destruction magic is another one you will have, uh, so I will talk more about uh, destruction spells later on. Essence leech. Uh, can be quite good, I guess, but it's uh, depends a bit on what enemies that you fight. So they might give you essence that you don't really need. But at times it could be quite good. But it's not not something I would choose primarily. I guess there are so many other skills that are good. Find the meteor is not, not something that you really want either. Uh, of course there are some uh, things to be researched because of celestial lore. So if you don't find any other sources it could be good to get this on a secondary wielder I guess. But otherwise I never choose this. God is a really essential skill to give you the melee resistance. So I always choose this one when it comes up. Uh, impressive is also <laughs> a skill that I never choose. It's uh, I don't see the point of it. I never liked it and I <laughs> never choose it unless I really have to. Learning is not something I normally pick either. I don't think this uh, increase will benefit you much and you will probably in large size map uh, level up uh, the max uh, at some point either way. So I don't see really see the benefit of this one. Magic resistance can be quite good I guess before you have gotten enough artifacts to give you spell damage resistance. It can be good to have, but uh, there are so many other skills that are good to have, so I normally don't choose this one, I would say. Uh, March movement is good, I guess, but uh, I normally don't choose this. I like to improve the movement uh, in other ways instead, so I can use other skills. Uh, melee is another really good skill, giving you both melee offense and melee resistance. So that's something to choose as well. Order magic is not something you normally get to choose. And it could be good to, uh, to have, I guess, in certain situations, but uh, normally not so special. Positioning is a, another really, really good uh, skill to have to give you the ranged resistance, which is sort of crucial for you when you play Rana, because the main main thing to defend against is the ranged units, I would say, because they are al almost always harder, hardest one to get and you don't have any any other real skills to give you a boost of ranged resistance, as you can do with melee resistance. So I guess this is a top choice, also giving the extra troop movement, which is really nice to have. Prepared is also a really good uh, skill to have, to give you that initiative. There are of co course a lot of ways to improve the initiative, but uh, this is one of them. And uh, in most games it's really crucial to have good initiative, since you get to act first. Uh, so there's there's one skill that if you get this one initiative might not be that necessary, but still good to have I'd say. And it also gives you 
one to troop movement. So I get uh, back to that power that uh, is good to have when I come down here. So radius, not something I choose normally. Of course the cluster view radius and movement and more gold when pillaging is good but still I prefer to enhance the combat capabilities. Uh, scouting, of course, view radius and movement is good also, but I prefer to enhance the combat capabilities. Stone Mason, not something you need normally either. And taxes, no, I guess it could be good for a, a side wielder. Tudor is really nice to have for most maps, especially the large ones to teach uh, your secondary wielders uh, to level up. So this is almost always a good choice for maybe not your main wielders, but maybe also secondary wielders. So this is a very good one to have. Woodcutter is not something I normally want to have either. Attuned. So getting some different essences is quite good I would say. To uh, get the ability to use a number of different spells. So quite good pick I would say. Maybe not the top one but not bad either. Uh, brutal is not a very good skill for Ran, I would say, since it's best for the lower tier units that uh, has uh, low damage and we don't use that much, so this is not a very good choice, I would say. Eager is another really good uh, power, giving you both troop movement in and initiative, both uh, something that we really want to have. So this is a really good choice. Essence Burst, a bit like Attuned I guess. Maybe this one is a bit better to give you the boost in the first round. Perhaps not the first uh, choice though, but uh, not a bad one either. And the Essence Shield, it uh, this was the power I'm talking about when I spoke about uh, uh, prepared. Since if you have this one you are not that forced to act early I would say. Since you can take a lot of hits both from melee, ranged and spells. Uh, when you have this one since you haven't uh, you haven't attacked yet or used an ability so when you have this one it's not as crucial to have uh, high initiative I would say so this one is a top choice I would say even though you can do without it but that requires you to have high initiative I would say uh, Farsight not something that is good for this faction either because we don't rely very much on the ranged units. Uh, Levy could really be good uh, in many cases, especially when you don't have that many buildings where you can build or recruit units from. This can be a really good choice. Uh, Rigor is on, not something that I normally choose either when I play this faction since it's best for lower tier units which we don't rely on. And uh, Speed of Winds is another really good choice to give the true movement and initiative which we have spoken about. Uh, the artifacts, I'm not gonna go through them now since uh, there are so many and it's a uh, topic for another video, I would say. 
So now we come to the spells. And we don't use the order much since we normally don't get much uh, essence of this. So I normally don't use... Maybe I use quicken once in a while to get more troop movement. Uh, destruction is uh, really good to have since it's one of the main spells that we will use. Especially I will use uh, Sabotage. So at level 3 we will negate the opponent's defense and the spell damage resistance. Which is really really powerful. So this is a spell that I use in almost all the fights I would say. Uh, if you really have a lot of this you could actually use it to take down the resistance of the enemy and potentially use some uh, damaging spells. So that can be a strategy in certain fights. Ice Bolt could be used in certain cases, maybe just to kill off a few of the last uh, units. Fireball can also be used in certain cases, but uh, will not normally not make a huge amount of damage. Arcana, on the other hand, is uh, very very powerful, very useful for playing Rana. Psychic Spear is not something that I normally use much. Could be good to just kill off uh, one unit or so. Uh, dimensional door on the other hand is really really powerful. Especially when you get to the tier 3. Which allows you to uh, move uh, one troop 6 hexes. So most often you are blocking yourself when you try to attack uh, maybe a town or so. This is extremely useful to get in your troops behind the enemy walls. So a very very mo maybe the most uh, useful spell when you play Rana I would say. Also you can move your slower units like the Shielen Elders for example. Uh, so they can get to the enemy as well. Repel, not something I normally use since I mostly attack where the enemies are, so they don't mostly often that doesn't get a, uh, any chance to get to my side. Arcane Storm, not something I normally use either, but I guess it could be used in certain cases. Insect Swarm, yeah, it could be good to just kill off uh, uh, the last unit or so and also to negate the initiative. Could be quite nice. Earth Block could be good in certain cases, I guess, but normally we don't need this one. Maybe when we defend our town or so. Uh, Mist, not something I use regular either uh, since I think it's kind of hard to use actually and I think that even if you have if you have attacked during the round and, and put this on your own units the opponent can still attack you so I'm not sure exactly how this is working uh, as a cloud I guess it could be used but not something I normally use Uh, Chaos Step, normally we only have the tier 3 since we don't have the Chaos skill. So this makes it not so useful. I guess in certain cases it could be good to get one more uh, step, but on the other hand it's uh, random so you could, you could as well get in the same positions you are basically. Boiling Blood, not something that I use either. And Tempest, not very much. 
need the shine, light, shine lightning since you don't get uh, much of this essence normally. Uh, this one could be used, I guess, in the most often in the early game when you don't need to do that much damage to the opponent. So can be used in the early game mostly, I would say. Uh, Fury, not something I use mostly. Maybe to kill off the last units. It could be, could be good when you don't really need the defense anymore. Strength and Essence. Uh, I guess it could be used in some cases, although it's uh, quite expensive to use. So it's not something I use very often. Destroy Essence, same thing. Not very useful, I would say. Or some cases, I guess. Clouded Vision, this one. Not very useful either, because normally we are very close to the ranged units, even though we might not block them from <coughs> using their ranged uh, ability. So even though we use this one, they can still attack us within the deadly range quite often as well, so it's not that useful, I would say. Aegis, uh, yeah, this one would be quite good to have, I guess, but I would like to have the tier 3 then, to be able to protect 3 uh, friendly troops, because just picking one, then they will just attack another one, so using this on tier 1 is not especially useful, I think not something I normally use. Burst of Strength. Not super useful either since we use the more uh, higher uh, tier units that have a lot of base damage. Could be quite good to put on the shamans though I guess since uh, when we defend the town since they have quite b low base damage. So Swap is another really, really good spell to use, especially when you want to attack your enemy, uh, enemy town, and uh, you have a hard time reaching their ranged units. This can be really, really good to have. So that's why Chaos is a really good essence to get. Uh, so. If possible, uh, put it on your wielder, for example, uh, you have the talisman or you can pick up some uh, spires or so to get some chaos. So Edril Scales is another one of the uh, spells that is really, really useful when you play uh, uh, Rana. Without this one it would be much, much harder, I would say. Since we do a lot of uh, melee attacking and we get the retaliation and then we need to have the melee resistance. So I almost always put this on my uh, units before they attack. So that they won't take so much damage in the retaliation. Invigorate. Uh, this is a quite good one, I would say, but it requires five to order essence, and we in many cases don't have that. Uh, but it will improve your initiative and troop movement, so if you can get some order essence, it's really, really nice to put these to improve the initiative and troop movement. 
So because it's so hard to get it, I don't really use it much, but if you get the order essence, it's really really nice. Uh, justice. Uh, this one is good to use against Rana, so it's something that the opponent very often use to kill our dragons. Especially if they have the tier 3, you will kill 3 of the dragons in one uh, go. So it's really, really powerful, mostly for dragons and other top tier units. And uh, it also requires a lot of order uh, essence, and we mostly will be able to use the tier 1 skill, so it doesn't make it super useful for us when we play Rana. <coughs> uh, lethargy, another really, really good uh, skill to use. Uh, if you have the Chaos Essence, it will decrease the enemy uh, uh, initiative and troop movement. So, if uh, for example we only have a few of our units having better initiative than the enemy, we can take this to make all of our units actually before theirs. So, really good in that sense. Apocalypse. Uh, not something I <laughs> almost ever use, I would say. Maybe if you're getting attacked by a much uh, stronger you, uh, wielder and you just want to make as much damage as possible. You could take this one, but I really seldom use this one. Blind Hatred is uh, another one that's really nice to use to uh, make them randomly attack uh, one of their own uh, units. So for the tier 3 you can actually select three uh, random, uh, three uh, units uh, and they will attack the nearest one. So pick the ones that will uh, get the ta to attack uh, its own units. <coughs> when we play Rana though, we barely never have a 6 uh, Chaos Essence, or it happens, but maybe we will use it for something else. So I don't really use it much, but it can be very powerful when it's used. Entangle something I use much either because most often the enemy doesn't have the time to move at all so I don't use it much. Onslaught not something I use much either with the Rana since it requires 6 to order magic but if you get this order of magic then can be really, really good, I guess. Uh, we also almost always will only be able to use the tier 1 uh, version since we don't have the uh, order skill mostly. Uh, Rupture, quite good one since it uh, requires Arcana and Destruction, which we get quite easily. So if you only have a few units left to kill or so, or if we have taken down their ranged uh, spell damage resistance a lot, then we can use this one. So it can be quite useful in certain cases. And the Breath of the Phoenix, another one that we could use, since we get both the creation and destruction skills, we can use it at tier 3. So it can be useful in certain cases. Rejuvenation is not something that I can have the possibility to use much either, since it requires Chaos Essence. A bit of that, and it's really, really hard to get this. But if you get it, it 
can be really good to use, I would say. A rapid fire, really, really hard to get also with the uh, requires ninth order uh, essence. I guess if we have a wielder that uh, will get this essence and defending a town, it could be good to give all your ranged units one extra attack. But uh, I would use this really, really rare, I would say. Uh, so when it comes to buildings, we have the Beast Coral, and it's really, really good building to get as uh, soon as possible. Uh, probably to get the Ravagers and Riders of the Swamp, so I like to upgrade this as soon as I can uh, to get the Riders of the Swamp. Uh, three Amors I almost never recruit, so I don't mind upgrade uh, this building to get these. Birthing pools is really nice to be able to enhance the uh, troop sizes for your troops and also to get more perhaps glimmer weave if you need that or get some more gold or research to get more essence. So really really good building. Shielding Sanctuary allows you to get Shielun and Shielun Elders, which is one of the main units that we use. So really, really good to get this one. So I normally have maybe one of uh, these uh, buildings. Uh, diggers, very good in the beginning when you build up and upgrade your town to get stone if you don't have many other resources of this. Uh, in the late game you can take this down or you can convert uh, stone you get to gold. So it could be used in late game as well. Uh, Dragon Pyramid is nice. You need it to be able to recruit dragons and uh, or elder dragons I would say. So, and also to improve the, mm, your units and uh, do research for beast and uh, rana units. So very, very good building. Fungus farm, good to get more gold. If you don't have any other building to get, then we're going to fill up the slots with these ones to get extra income. Gatherers, very good to have in the beginning of the game to get to earn a lot of wood, which is required to upgrade your town. So very good in the beginning. In 2 is required for these uh, coral upgrades, so you need it in the beginning. But I very seldom recruit these ones, except maybe in the very early stages of the game. Look out tower can be good to increase the max garrison and to get the ballista. Uh, so in most situations it's good to have a solid defense in your town. Uh, so then these are really powerful. So I normally have maybe two or three of these. Uh, mud huts, not something I usually use in the end game or even middle game. But uh, I guess it, they could be used in the beginning of the game. If you don't get the chance to get the beast coral or shell sanctuary. But often I just skip these uh, totally. Or maybe there is some building that require this one, but I uh, can't remember now. But anyways, I'll just take this down afterwards. Uh, shaman tent, really nice to get uh, shamans and sages. So I normally have maybe two or three of these in a tier 5 town to be able to defend it. And also use the, these on the main wielder in the early stages of the game. 
Uh, so smoldering cave, really really good to have of course. So uh, I normally try to get to the tier 2 quite fast uh, and then tier 3 maybe a little bit later since it sort of costs me to recruit elder dragons. So very very powerful to have this one. Spawner pool is uh, good to have in different locations uh, as in doesn't matter which uh, faction you play really. So very good to have this one in certain cases. Exchanges also depends on your uh, situation, how many towns you have, how much of these other buildings you have managed to get, also how much uh, resources of uh, ancient amber you have, if you really need to uh, to trade to get more ancient amber, most often you need it, I would say. So then you need as many exchanges of these as you can to get better rates. So very good to have in most cases. We come to research. Let's start with the dragon pyramid, ancient rituals. Uh, to improve the, the shamans and sages, quite costly with ancient amber though, so I wouldn't uh, research this one very early, but maybe when I have a lot of resources I will research this one to improve these guys. Dragon Roar, uh, of course, really, really good to get this one as early as possible to improve all these things for the dragons. But as you can see it's very expensive as well. Uh, Exforced exoskeleton. Uh, okay so this only improves the tremors and I don't use this so I don't have to do this research either. Uh, fierce Beast. Since Riders of the Swamp is a beast unit, it can be quite good to research this one. Perhaps not the first thing I would uh, prioritize, but uh, in the late game it can be quite good to get the extra melee offense. Also if you have a lot of glimmer weaving gold, you can just uh, go for this one. Hands of Fire, since I don't use uh, Eath Dress much, I rarely research this one. Angry Beast, improves the damage, mm. but not that useful I would say. Of course it's not bad to increase the damage for Rides of the Swamp, but I guess there are other things that you would like to get before this one. Still I would research these ones if you had the uh, econom economics to do it. Uh, predator in instinct, a very good thing to research also to improve the melee offense, truth movement and destruction essence. So one of the first things I would research. Quick feet, also really good ones to improve the initiative and troop movement of the Rana troops. So something you would like to have quite early as, as you can. Uh, safeguard, since I don't use these very much, I rarely do this research either. Sharp teeth. Uh, very good also to get the melee offense, which you, since you may mostly use melee units, it's really really good to improve this one. Sharper teeth, mm, I don't use much uh, the hunters, so I don't do this research either. 
strength and shell good to improve this as well but also very costly as you can see but good to get when you have the resources swift scales since i don't use the crawlers much i don't do this research either thick uh, hide really good as well since all of the rana troops will benefit from extra defense so very good to get Tough beasts, also very good to get. Not super costly, especially with the celestial ore either. Which you mostly, most often have quite a good amount of, I would say. So, definitely worth to research this one. Tough flesh. That useful either, I would say, since it's mostly good for the lower chief units. So, not something to prioritize. So, we'll come to birthing pools. Uh, increasing the troop size of guards, not so useful since we don't use them much. But this one is uh, really nice to improve the uh, Shielun troop size from. 10 to a maximum of 20 instead. And this one is really useful to get the max trip size to 6 from 3. So I almost always do this research as soon as I can. And this one not used much since we don't use the Ethras a lot. And this one can be good, especially if we don't have much other resources or glimmer weave. Uh, so this one increases your income and quite good to research if you can afford it. And this is not something that I usually research either, since I don't use the hunters much. Uh, this one can be quite good to research, to uh, increase the max size for the shamans, uh, if you are defending with these guys. And this one is something that I normally use in the middle part of the game, when I need to do a lot of construction simultaneously. It's good to have this one. This is not something I use either, because I don't use the tremors. This one is really nice to have, since uh, you get more as, uh, destruction essence. Of course it's really costly, 20 Ancient Amber for the tier 1. But uh, the first tier can be done quite quickly, I would say. And the same thing with uh, this one, if you can afford it. Go to the tier 1 or tier 2 early, and maybe tier 3 later on. And the same thing with this one, but maybe this in is the most important uh, spell that you use, so maybe more important to get to tier 3 for this one. Uh, so this is not something I use much either, since I don't use the crawlers. Uh, but this one is really nice to increase the max troop size from 15 to 30. So this one should do really early as well. So I guess that was it. I hope you find this interesting. And uh, let me know what uh, you like to... Uh, what, in what way you like to uh, play your Rana faction. Uh, please uh, write something in the comments about this and uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.